Must you spend $200 to sous vide a steak or will $15 do just as well? Stay tuned to find out the answer today on Sam the Cooking Guy. It's an age old question, my friends. Do you need to spend a few hundred dollars to sous vide? Or might there be a just as effective, but way less expensive way to do it? And, and we're gonna prove this one way or the other today. We start by answering the question, what is sous vide? Sous vide is at its simplest, a constant temperature water bath. And here's the concept. You take a protein, chicken, steak, uh, pork, uh, fish. You put it in a, uh, a vacuum sealed bag or a Ziploc bag and you put it in this water bath and you set the temperature to the temperature you want your protein to be cooked to. For example, if you like your steaks medium rare, we'll call that somewhere around 130. You set the temperature of the sous vide to 130 degrees. The steak's in the bag and it goes in. And here's why I think people like it. When the water in the bath gets the steak in the bag to 130 degrees, it can't go over. It won't go over. It's impossible to go over and overcook it because the water is 130. It can't go to 135 or 140. Then what you've got is, is a protein cooked perfectly, but you gotta just make it look beautiful on the outside. And there's many ways to do that. So we're gonna do this two different ways. The first is by using an actual piece of equipment. And the second is a, shall we call it a hack? Let's call it a hack. Let's get this set up and then I'll show you the hack way. Then we'll get the steaks going and then everybody's gonna be happy. Couple of nice little ribeyes, right? Right. Decent size, a thin steak, you don't need sous vide for it. You can just uh, hold a match to it and it'll be fine. All right, so because these are going in water, we wanna protect them. We don't want these wet. We want the benefit of the heat. So it's two things you can do. The first is your basic everyday Ziploc bag. We'll take our steak, our first one, and we'll just put the kid right in here like this. And we'll deal this with the hack method. The non-hack method, trying to make it as expensive as we can, will include a vacuum sealed steak. So we take one of these vacuum sealed bags that you buy just like that, we take our steak, we put it in, like voila, and then we get to the vacuum seal part. Vacuum sealing unit, we turn it on, and in we go, like this. And you put it, feed into the wide mouth till it engages. There we go, takes the air out. And when it gets to the point where it thinks there's no more air left, it turns red, it starts to seal, very nice. Now you just wait till it spits it out. Well, it turns off, basically. Wait for it. Seal, beautiful, right? No air. Next, the water. Alrighty, first up, the actual sous vide piece of equipment itself. You got your big bin here with your water in it. This kid comes, we'll just set him in here. I sometimes put the corner underneath. Nice and stable. Now we'll turn it on. This particular one, as I think may, they all do these days, has an app. So we're just gonna set the temperature on this to 100 and, what do we wanna do? 130 degrees and hit start. There you go. Constant temperature water bath. It circulates the water. So it's not just hot here, it's hot all the way around. And now you can see this one tells you that the water is 101 degrees. We're trying to get up to 130. It's working its way up. It'll get there, it will notify us. Then we can put our stuff in. Look, you can put your stuff in now, it doesn't make any difference. We'll do that at the same time as the other one. Now we prepare the hack version. And the hack uses two things. One is any old cooler you got in your house. And two, once it's filled with water, is an instant read thermometer. Look, it's very simple. Same concept. You want the water at the temperature we want. So we want 130 degrees. My water comes out of my tap at about 125. So look, 126, 127, that's pretty good. 128, oh, it's hotter than I thought. 127. But here's how we maintain this. You can hear beside me my tea kettle. Take this kid over. We're gonna keep this handy. And when the temperature drops, we just give it a little boost of our superheated water, give it one stir, and then check our temp. And our temp is now 130, 24, 28, 129, 130, exactly where I want. All right, so our steaks go in. On the hack side, watch this. If you just put this in, it's just gonna float. So we want the air to come out of the bag. So lower it slowly, and the pressure of the water finds its way and helps seal all the way around the bag. Beautiful. Just like that, just like that. It's there, have a good look. 
We'll shut our lid. This guy you just slip in. If it floats up a bit, you can always take like a spoon, drop it on top to keep it down. You could put a plate on it. It's all good. Now remember, when it gets to the temperature, in our case, 130 degrees, it can't go over. If it takes an hour to get there, but you don't take it out of the water bath for an hour and a half or two hours, does anything go wrong, Chance? No. Nothing goes wrong. Can you leave it too long in the water bath, Max? I don't know. I mean, I want to say no because it keeps the temperature, but if you leave it for ever, yes, you can. If you leave it too long, the protein starts to get a little, it starts to break down a little too much, gets a little mushy. It won't be the texture that you're used to. It's that simple. Look, you go online, you find all kinds of charts that tell you how long things take to uh, get to temperature, depending on thickness and uh, the temperature of the item itself. I can take a steak that I've had in a vacuum seal bag in my freezer, put it straight into the water, no thawing necessary at all, which is really damn uh, handy. Friend of mine, we'll call him Sean, what's actually his name, he goes to Costco, he buys a whole bunch of, you'll like this Max, chicken breasts, so a big shit ton of them. He puts them in individual bags, vacuum seals them, brings them to temperature in his sous vide, takes them out, puts them right into an ice bath, stops the cooking, dries them off, puts them in the freezer. Now when he goes to work in the morning, he throws one in the fridge, it defrosts, and all he has to do is finish the outside on the grill and on the, the flat top and the, you know, a hot cast iron pan, that kind of stuff. So the only downside now to the, the cooler version is that you have to maintain the temperature manually as opposed to this guy getting there and staying there. And I didn't want to just have steak for the sake of steak, so in a little bit we'll make some mushrooms too. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's grab our instant read and have a look. And we're at, oh look, it's holding temp really nicely, but I'll give it a little splash. I do want to try and maintain that 130. Not the worst thing in the world if it drops a bit. And we're 127, 128. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. 129. One more splash and we'll call it good for now. Maybe we should make some mushrooms. And these mushrooms that are some of my favorite to make begin with two things. One's going to be a knob of butter. Come on, buddy. Melt, melt, melt. And a little splash of uh, olive oil. Boom. Like that. Once this has started to melt nicely, uh, screw it, we're going for it. We're gonna put our mushrooms in and I like to start the mushrooms face down. Is that face down or is that face up? Face up, I don't know what you would call that. On their stomachs, that's it. I think we've had this conversation before. We definitely have. This is mushrooms on their stomachs. I think there's six ingredients in this. Mushrooms, garlic, oil, butter, salt, pepper. Count that as one. A little splash of soy. Did I say garlic? Garlic. So now wait till these start to do their thing. We want these starting to get a little bit of color. Okay, so now we're starting to get a little color on there. Now it's time to flip the kids. And by the way, I miscounted. There's one more thing I want to add. Oh, you'll see it. We'll get there. But what I like about mushrooms like this is that you can get them done and then just kind of turn them off and come back and give them a little quick reheat and serve them. Not everything has to be done at the last minute. And honestly, that's a lesson I've had to learn over the years. I was a last minute guy. Everything had to come out of the oven, just as people were like sitting down at the table. And that's just ridiculous. All right, continue, continue, continue. Nothing to see here for another couple minutes. It's one of my favorite parts of this uh, mushroom cooking process. Look at the caps. They're all filling up with mushroom pea. Give them a little flip so it comes out. And when it does, the heat of the pan will start to dry up the moisture in it because we don't want them sitting in that too long. Hey, 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 hey. See those two little guys are like hanging out together. Okay, so wait for most of this mushroom liquid to evaporate. Oh, they smell so good. And really nothing has happened yet. All the good part is about to happen. But they're getting, see? They're getting a little soft now, which is great. And when most of the liquid's evaporated, we give it a little shot of vermouth and let it now start to, I was gonna say disintegrate. I think I mean evaporate. Let it evaporate, little toss. I mean, just a couple things and we're there. Next up, a little hit of garlic. You know me. I like a little oil when my garlic goes in. Okay, decent hit of garlic. That was a good clove, man. Let this start to get fragrant. And when you start to smell it, mm, we can mix it in. Little pinch of salt and pepper, tiny bit of soy. And I'm using soy paste here because I love it and I have it. And now these we're just gonna leave. Take them off the heat, they're ready. We've got two things to add just before we serve them, but we'll take them off the heat, and when the steaks are ready, we'll bring these back to life.
All right, we're ready to make this happen now. So just push these guys over, make a little space, turn off the sous vide, just like that. Now we can get our guy out. Okay, we've got a plate here. Because even though they're in these bags, you can see moisture has still accumulated, right? So a little knife. We'll cut this kid open and out he comes. Perfectly cooked. Can't you tell? Oh, it's disgusting. Remember the first time I did this, I was horrified at how it looked. I was like, no! And now this guy, out we come. So we wanna dry them off because we don't want all this water. That is not your friend at this point. Another paper towel and we do this. Make them nice and dry. Put them back in their same order on here and now we can season them. All we're gonna give is a little salt and pepper like this, both sides. And when you've done that, we can head over to the cast iron pan for some beautiful finishing. You could use anything, butter, oil, or beef tallow. And this is just beef fat, and this is gonna get a little smoky here, but it's gonna be great. And it's just really gonna make some amazing flavor on these two steaks. And they're not gonna be in here very long. So let that get hot. Splash all over your lens. Splash all over both of us, or splash all over everything. And then in they go. One, love this. Two, really love this. And this is all about Coloring the outside, that's it folks. Texture, color, beauty. I'm getting splashed. We don't wanna give it too long because I don't really want this cooking through any more than it already is. So look, we can give it a turn. Give it a little bit on that side. Nice. And I think these guys are there and I would like to help them come off and get eaten. All right, the steaks are resting. They don't really need to because they've been cooked low, but while they just sit there for a second. One more little knob of butter. Look, you gotta just let this happen. Do you want it good or do you not want it good? And I think the answer is you want it good. So we stir this through. It already has the garlic and the soy. It's been seasoned. We add some parsley. We give it one more of these. Oh, gorgeous. We'll take them out. I'll put them in a little container. Put them in a little dish. We'll cut our steaks and then somebody eats. And our steaks will look like this. Here's the cooler sous vide. And if I cut it, that's the beauty of sous vide, folks. And this one is the proper sous vide. Look, there's no difference. Oh, wait, there is a difference. This one, you have to buy a $200 piece of equipment and a vacuum sealer. This one, you buy a $15 instant read thermometer. And I think you're way ahead of the game. All right, so let's just cut a couple bites here. And that will look, wow. See the juice is just pooling on top? Oh my. It's just like, it's just great. So here's what I like. Only thing I think it needs is just a little beautiful flaky sea salt. The little grains like that. Now it's time to take a bite, but Chance, you come over here and I'll tell you why I won't. So as much as I would love to eat all of this right now, I can't because tomorrow is my colonoscopy. My colonoscopy. And the day before, you're on a clear liquid diet, which pretty much sucks right now. We've got our boy Chansey here. Chansey? This is really working out in my favor. Isn't it just? Boy, you got nice eyes, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much, You're welcome. Sam. Okay, first, uh, first time sous vide steak, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. Oh my God. You're not lying. It's a perfect stick. Okay, but wait, here. Now I have one bite here, just so people can see and know that there's no, there's really no difference. That's the one that came out of the actual sous vide. The first one was the cooler sous vide. Okay, all right, here we go. Same steak. No, no, no noticeable difference. Mm. Please, dude, while you're here, oh. have a freaking mushroom, because I've been dying. Honestly, I've wanted the mushrooms almost more than the steak. Okay, this one's for you. Isn't it beautiful? Glistening. The soy really makes a difference. Soy and butter is kind of magical, Those I think. Are insane. Yeah, yeah. So is the steak. There's a pasta that we'll do that has uh, mushrooms with soy and butter in it. It's really, really good. Amazing. Thank you're, you, Sam. You're a good man. I just want to read a couple comments that uh, we got on our last video, which was the chicken teriyaki meal prep. I could just say this: we we said in the in the in the video, if you like the idea of meal prep, let us know and we'll do more. I think the overwhelming comment was do more. We love the idea of meal prep, so yes, we will. But there's also a conversation about me shaving. Uh, I shave in the shower. John Ingersoll wrote, "Back when I shaved, I always shaved by feel in the shower. So much easier and no mess in the sink." How were they surprised by that? It was so easy. But now I just rock the beard, so 
It's actually easier. Brandon Goodson writes, the fact that Max can't shave his own face without using a mirror just means that when he shaves, we refer to it as that time of the month. I like these comments. And then we had a, I used an old school phrase in like Flynn. The Glenn uh, Channel wrote, it's a reference to the old actor Errol Flynn, starred in a bunch of movies as an action hero back in the 30s and 40s. Rudy Bone Own wrote, wouldn't use the phrase in like Flynn. It refers to the actor Errol Flynn in the 40s when he was charged with molestation of minors. Just looking out for your channel. Oh. So thank you. And then uh, I can't read this because it, it's backwards letters. It looks Russian or something. Hey, Sam, love the show. Just one comment from my side. I've been cooking basmati a lot lately and find out that one lime per cup of rice makes it insanely good. Almost tastes like sourdough bread. Keep up the recipes. We like them. So I love it when you guys give suggestions. I love it when you just comment. I love the tip about the basmati rice. Max is going to learn how to shave in the shower. Chancey's going to eat more steak and that's all I got. We thank you guys for being here. We appreciate it that you spend your time with us. And we hope you learned something today. Cooler sous vide. Get on it, Sparky.